assalamu alaikum students uh, today we are going to start 9709 13 May June 2024 now this paper held on 29th of April So now we are starting question number one. Question number one is about <clears throat> series from the topic of binomial. Uh, find the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of this. So the first bracket is expanded bracket. We don't have to expand the first bracket as the whole power of the bracket is one. And we have to expand the second bracket by using formula one plus n c one b one plus n c2 p2 and we don't have to move we don't have to go further as we just have to calculate up to x squared so now this will be 2 minus 5x here it is 1 plus 10 c1 is 10 into 3 is 30 x plus this one is 405 x squared now we need to calculate the coefficient of x square. So if we multiply 2 with 405, we'll get x square. So 2 multiplied by 405 is 810. And if we multiply minus 5 with 30 and x into x, again, x square. So this is minus 5 into 30 is minus 150. minus 150 and the final answer is 660 this is the coefficient of this is the coefficient of x square right now after that question number two question number two is about trigonometry let's see what is in the question number two uh, the question is in the diagram the diagram shows the curve y equals to k cos x minus pi by 6, where k is a positive constant and x is measured in radians. The curve crosses the x-axis at a and b is the minimum point. Find the coordinates of a and b. Right. We have to calculate the coordinates of a and b. First, I am calculating the coordinates of a. For a, y is 0. So, can I say k cos x minus 1 upon 6 pi equals to 0. And after that, cos x minus 1 upon 6 pi equals to 0. And x minus pi by 6 equals to cos inverse of 0 is pi by 2. What we are finding, we are finding the value of a, the coordinates of a, but if y equals to 0, so by this, the first value of x from where the curve crosses x-axis is pi by 2 plus pi by 6 is 2 pi by 3. So it means this is the first value from where the curve crosses x-axis, 2 pi by 3. Now we have to calculate the second value. Now we have to calculate the second value. As we know that cos 0 is at pi by 2 and also at 3 pi by 2. So the next value is 2 pi by 3 is the first value. Next value is 3 pi by 2 plus pi by 6 is 5 pi by 3. So this is the next value means this is the x coordinate of a sorry it is 5 pi by 3 it is 5 pi by 3 now 
what is the next value? How can we calculate? How can we calculate the next value? So now uh, the coordinates of A, the coordinates of A are five pi by three comma zero. This is A and now for B, how can we calculate uh, the coordinate of B? Now the curve is y equals to k cos x minus pi by six. The multiple of the multiple of function is the amplitude. So it means we have to go k units up and k units down. K units up and k units down from the main axis and main axis is zero because we just have we don't have the constant in this equation. So now, how can we calculate the coordinates of B? For B, the y-coordinates are minus k, but we don't have the x-coordinate. So for x-coordinate, if we, if we calculate, if we subtract 5 pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3, if we subtract 2 pi by 3 from 5 pi by 3, the result is pi. It means on x intercept there's a gap of pi between the two intercepts and as it is a cyclic curve so if i'm going to calculate the next intercept so it means just add pi in 5 pi by 3 5 pi by 3 plus pi the result is 8 pi by 3 the result is 8 pi by 3 so it means this one is 8 pi by 3 and now, after that, add one more pi to get the last intercept. Again, plus pi. So, answer is 11 pi by 3. This is the final intercept. 11 pi by 3. Now, we have to calculate exactly the middle value. Exactly the middle value. So, just add both of them. Add both of them. 8 pi by 3 plus 11 pi by 3. So the answer is 19 pi by 3 divided by 2 for the mid value. So it will be 19 pi by 6. So 19 pi by 6 comma minus k are the coordinates of P. Hopefully it is clear. Now <clears throat> the next one. Find the exact value of t that satisfies the equation. The equation is given over here. 3 sin inverse 3t. 3 sin inverse 3t plus 2 cos inverse this under root 2 by 2 equals to pi. We have to calculate the value of t. So now 3 sin inverse 3t and cos inverse of under root 2 by 2, cos inverse of under root 2 by 2 is cos inverse of under root 2 by 2 is pi by 4. So plus 2 times pi by 4 equals to pi. So, 3 sin inverse 3t equals to pi minus pi by 2 and sin inverse 3t equals to pi by 6 and 3t equals to sine pi by 6. And sine pi by 6 is 1 upon 2. So the value of t is 1 upon 6. This is the final answer. Now, what is next? Next is circular measures. And this is question number 2. And circular measure is question number 3. What we have in the question of circular measures? 
The question is, the diagram shows a sector of a circle with center C. The radii C, A, C, B each have length R centimeter and the size of the reflex angle A, C, B is theta. The sector shaded in the diagram has a perimeter of 65. Perimeter of the sector is 65. Can I say that the perimeter is S plus 2R equals to 65 and S is R theta plus 2R equals to 65 and after that and, <clears throat> and an area of 225. The area of shaded portion is 225. So area equals to 225 means half R squared theta equals to half R squared theta equals to 225. Now, from the first equation, if I calculate the value of theta, it will be 65 minus 2R divided by 65 minus 2R divided by R and substitute in the second equation. So it will be half R squared 65 minus 2R over R <coughs> equals to 225. <coughs> R and R cancel out power. 2 multiplied by 225 is 450. And here it is. R multiplied by 65 is 65R minus 2R squared. So now 2R squared minus 65R plus 450 equals to 0. Now, after that, calculate the two values of R from your calculator. The two values of R, the first is 10 and the second one is 22.5. According to this, the theta is if R is 10, then what is the value of theta? The value of theta is 4.5. And if R is 22.5, then the value of theta is 0 0.8. And this is not, this is not reflex. And here examiner is saying that the theta is reflex angle. So it means we have to reject, we have to reject these values and we have to accept the first R10 and theta 4.5. And after that, we have to calculate the area of the triangle ACB. We have to calculate the area of the triangle ACB. How can we calculate the area of triangle ACB? If we calculate this theta, the 2R, the radius is given, which is 10. So for the B part, area of the triangle is half. The two sides, R into R, means 10 squared sine theta and theta is and theta is 4.5 so it will be 2 pi minus theta theta is 4.5 according to this according to this the area of the triangle is 48 point 48.9 this is the area of triangle means the part B of question number three. Now, after doing part B, question number four, question number four is again of trigonometry, show that the equation this can be written in the form of sine. So now, the first is here, it is cos theta, in the bracket, we have 7, tan theta is sin theta upon cos theta minus 5 cos theta equals to 1. So now, by taking LCM, cos and cos cancel out. It will be 7 sin theta minus 5 cos squared theta equals to 1. So now, 7 sine theta. This will be 5, 1 minus sine squared theta. 
equals to 1, 7 sine theta minus 5 plus 5 sine squared theta equals to 1. And the final answer will be 5 sine squared theta plus 7 sine theta minus 6 equals to 0. This is the final result in terms of sine. And after that, and after that, we have to solve the equation. The first equation and the second part, the first part and the second part, both are same except the value of theta. Here, the value of theta is 2x. So just write 5 sine squared 2x plus 7 sine 2x minus 6 equals to 0. And according to the question, our range, now our range will be 0 to 2x, it will be 360. We have to go up to 360. Now, by using calculators, the two values of sine, the first sine 2x is 3 upon 5 and the second sign 2x is minus 2 which is not possible and here sign is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant so the basic angle is sine inverse of 3 upon 5 is 36.9 therefore the general angle the first angle is 36.9 and the second angle is 180 minus 36.9, which is 143.1. And after that, divide all the angles by 2. So it will be 18.5 and 71.6. These are the two results for second part. Now, after that, this was question number 4. And now this is question number 5. What we have in this question number five, the equation of the curve is given. Find the coordinates of the stationary point. How can we calculate the coordinates of the stationary point? In this, first calculate y dash. First, arrange the equation 2x squared minus 1 upon 2 x power minus 1 plus 3. So, y dash is 4x minus 1 upon 2, x squared, and now equal to 0. So it will be by taking LCM, 8x cubed, minus 1 equals to 0, and the value of x cubed is 1 over 8, and the value of x is 1 over 2. We have to calculate the coordinates. If x is 1 over 2, just replace x in the equation of curve, y equals to 2, 1 over 2, whole squared minus 1 over 2. Here it is 1 over 2 plus 3. So the final answer according to this, the stepping is not necessary just by using your calculator. The answer is, and one more thing, here it is. So this one is negative, negative. Here it is negative and here it is negative. So the answer is 9. So the answer is, Nine. Hopefully, this part, a simple part, is clear. Now, determine the nature of the stationary point. For nature of the stationary point, we have to calculate the second derivative. So now, what is the first derivative? The first derivative is y dash is 4x plus 1 over 2, 4x plus 1 over 2, x power minus 2. Second derivative is 4 minus 2 over 2x cube. 2 and 2 cancel out. Replace the value of x by minus 1 upon 2. So y double dash is 4 minus 1 upon minus 1 upon 2. This will give us a positive value. So we can say that this is a minimum point. This is a 
minimum point. Hopefully it is also clear. And now after that, for positive values of X, determine whether the curve shows a function that is increasing, decreasing, or neither give a reason for your answer. Okay. At when X is minus half, it is the minimum value. When X is minus half, it is the minimum value. So it means when we are going toward the positive values, let's say zero, one, two, then therefore the curve is increasing. Therefore the curve is increasing. According to diagram, it is a uh, reason that when X is minus one upon two, when X is minus one upon two, this is the minimum value. So the diagram is the reason for increasing curve means in the diagram, in the diagram after minus half for positive values, the curve is increasing. So it's enough to write here increasing by the help of diagram. Now, question number six. Now, what we have in question number six, uh, question number six is a curve passes through the point four upon five comma three and the gradient of the curve is given. Find the equation of the curve. It means we have to integrate this equation. So y dash is given. Y dash is minus 20, 5x minus 3, whole power minus 2. If we integrate this, so it will be y equals to minus 20. Here it is 5x minus 3. Whole power minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 upon minus 1. Derivative of the base is 5. So y equals to 4 upon 5x minus 3. 4 upon 5x minus 3 plus c. And if x is 4 upon 5 and y is minus 3, so it will be 4 upon, here it is at the place of x, 4 upon 5. So it will be 5 and 5 cancel. The 4 is remaining. 4 minus 3 is 1 plus c. So the value of c is minus 7. Therefore, the equation of the curve is y equals to 4 upon 5x minus 3 minus 7. This is the equation of the curve. After that, the second part is the part of transformation in which we have to use the equation of the curve. The equation of the curve is y equals to 4 upon 5x minus 3 minus 7. Now, what is the transformation? A curve is transformed by a stretch in x direction with a scale factor 1 upon 2 followed by a translation of 2, 10. So first we have to stretch the curve for stretching y equals to 4 upon and here a stretch is in x direction with a scale factor 1 upon 2. It means we have to multiply x with 2. So it will be 5 in the bracket 2x minus 3. All the things, all the remaining elements will remain same. So it will be 4 upon 10x minus 3 minus 7. And after that, and after that, there is a translation of 2 in x-axis, 10 in y-axis. So if there is 2 in x-axis, it means if there is positive 2 in x-axis, it means we have to subtract, we have to subtract 2 from x, 10, x minus 2, minus 3, minus 7, and 10 units in y-axis, it means we have to add 10 in the whole function. So the final answer will be 4 upon 10x. And 10 to the 20, 20 minus 10, 23 plus 3. This is the final answer after two transformations. First is stretching and then translation of 2 in x 
and 10 and y. If there is positive 2, then we have to subtract. If there is a negative 2, then we have to add. But in case of y, if there is positive 10, then we have to add. If there is negative 10, then we have to subtract. Next question, question number seven is about the series progression question. And the question is the first term of AP is 1.5 and the sum of the first 10 term is 127.5. The first term is 1.5. S10 is 127.5. By using the, uh, we have to calculate the common difference by using the formula of sum n by two, 2a plus n minus 1, 10 minus 1 is 9d equals to 127.5. And after that, here it is 5. So d equals to, let's say 9d equals to 127.5. And here it is 2 fives are 10 divided by 5 minus 2 into 1.5. Therefore, the value of D is 2.5. The value of D is 2.5. After that, find the sum of all the terms of the arithmetic progression whose values are between 25 and 100. Whose values are between 25 and 100. So now, let's see what is this. So first calculate uh, Tn. Tn equals to a plus n minus 1. And the common difference is d. What is the value of a? The value of a is given in the first part, 3 upon 2. Plus n minus 1. And the common difference is 2.5. So here it is. 2.5 n minus 1. The Tn is 2.5 n minus 1. In the question, they are saying that the values are in between 25 and 100. The values of term, it means in between 25 and 100. So it means the values of Tn are given 25 and 100. So can I say that the Tn can I say that the Tn must be greater than, Tn must be greater than 25 and Tn must be less than 100. So what is Tn? 2.5n minus 1 greater than 25. So according to this, n is greater than 104 so therefore, what is the value of n? The value of n is 11. And here it is, 2.5n minus 1 is less than 100. According to this, what is n? n is less than 40.4. So therefore, what is the value of n? The value of n is less than 40.4. It means 40. So now, calculate sum up to the 11th term. n by 2. 2a plus n minus 1, 11 minus 1 is 10, and the common difference is 2.5. So, according to this, sum up to 11 term is 127.5. And here, sum up to the 40, 40th term, n by 2, 2a, a is 3 upon 2, plus n minus 1, so it means 39 and the d is 2.5. So what is the value of S40? S40 is 20. And this is S11. We need to calculate the sum between the terms. So S40 minus S11 is the final answer. And it will be 1, double eight, 
2.5. This is the sum between the 11, between 40 and 11th term or 11th or 40th term. Hopefully it is clear. Now, question number eight is about the circle and uh, what we have to do in this question. A circle with equation this meets the y-axis at the point A and B. The tangents at the circle at A and B meet at the point P. Find the coordinates of P, right? So first, I'm just making a simple diagram. Let's say here is a circle. And now, this is, let's say, point A. And this is, let's say, point B. It is just a simple sketching. It is not the accurate drawing. And this is the circle's center. We have to calculate the tangents uh, to the circle at A and B. The point where the tangents meet. Okay, so first we have to calculate the equation of tangents. Let's say this is C. So if we calculate gradient of AC, then this will be the negative reciprocal gradient of tangent at A. And if we calculate the gradient of B, then this will be the negative reciprocal of grad, uh, gradient of the tangent at B. Now, but we don't have the coordinates of A and B. So first I'm calculating the coordinates of A and B and I'm replacing X zero in the equation of tangent. So it will be Y squared plus two Y minus 15 equals to zero. So according to your calculator, the two values of Y are Y is equals to three and minus five. So it means the first the coordinate of A is 0, 0,3 and B is 0, minus 5. Now we have to calculate uh, the center of the circle. For center of the circle, it is an expanded equation and the coefficient of x is minus 2a is equals to minus 6 and the coefficient of y minus 2y minus 2b is equals to 2. So what is the value of A? The value of A is 3. And the value of B is minus 1. By using the general expanded equation, I compared the coefficient of x and y by minus 2a and minus 2b. So the center is 3 minus 1. <coughs> center is 3 minus 1. So now, I'm calculating the gradient of AC. Gradient of AC is y2 minus y1, 3 plus 1 over x2 minus x1, 0 minus 3. So the gradient is 4 upon 3 with negative sign. So the gradient of tangent at A is gradient equals to 3 upon 4, negative reciprocal. Now by using y minus y1, y minus y1 coordinate of a equals to m x minus x1 cross multiplication 4y minus 3 equals to 3x and 4y equals to 3x plus 3 and after that <clears throat> the gradient of bc which is equals to minus 5 plus 1 divided by 0 minus 3 and it will be 4 upon 3. So the gradient of tangent at B is minus 3 upon 4. So now again by using y minus y1, the coordinates of B equals to m x minus x1. So it will be 4y plus 20 equals to minus 3x. 
and 4y equals to minus 3x minus 20. We have to solve them simultaneously. So just compare both 4y. <coughs> so we can write it like 3x plus 3 equals to minus 3x minus 20. So 6x equals to minus There is, there is a little mistake here uh, by cross multiplication of the first four threes are here it is 12. So this one is also 12. Four threes are 12. So this one is also 12. So here also it is 12. Now, it will be 6x minus 32. And the final answer of x is minus 16 over 3. For y, for y, just replace on any equation x by minus 16 over 3 and get the value of y. So the value of y is uh, minus 1. So the coordinate where the tangents meet is minus 16 over 3 minus 1 minus 16 over 3 and minus 1. Hopefully, the question is clear. Question of circle. There's no confusion in this. After that, question number 9. What we have in question number 9, part A, find the equation of the uh, tangent to the curve at x equals to 3. We have to calculate the equation of tangent at this point, at x equals to 3. So for this, first we have to differentiate the curve. So the curve is y equals to under root 2x cube plus 10. The differentiation of under root thing is upon twice the question. So it is 2x cube plus 10 and write the derivative of under the root thing above in numerator. So it will be 6x squared. So here it is 2, 3 is our 6. So 3x squared over under root 2x cubed plus 10. Replace x with 3 and get the value of gradient of tangent. And if you replace x by 3, if you replace x by 3, so the answer is 27 over 8. So the answer is 27 over 8. This is the gradient of tangent. The value of x is 3. What is the value of y? The value of y is under root. Replace x by 3. So it will be 2 into 3 cube plus 10. So the answer is 8. These are the coordinates and the gradient is 27 over 8. So by using y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1 cross multiply 8y minus 64 equals to 27x minus 81 and 8y minus 8y, sorry, we have to write it like 27x minus 8y, 27x minus 8y minus 17 equals to 0 is the equation of tangent, where x equals to 3. After that, uh, the region shaded in the diagram enclosed by the curve, the straight line x equals to 1, x equals to 3, and y equal to 0. Find the volume of the solid obtained when the shaded region. Okay. We have to calculate the volume. So how can we calculate the volume? Integrate the square of the curve. And the curve is in under root. So it will be after 
squaring, it will be 2x cubed plus 10. And the limits are from 1 to 3. Multiply by pi. So now, it will be 2x4 over 4 plus 10x from 1 to 3. Apply limits. So it will be 3 power 4 upon 2 plus 10 into 3. Upper limit minus the lower limit. It will be 2 upon 4 plus 10. So according to this, the final answer is 60 and pi. 60 pi is the final result. Hopefully, this question of three marks is also clear, a simple question. Now, the next question number 10. Question number 10 is about, again, the arithmetic and geometric progression. Uh, the 10 is, the geometric progression A1, A2, A3 has first term 2 and a common ratio R, where R is positive. It is given that, it is given that 9 over 2, A5, plus 7A, Three equals to eight. If it is a geometric progression, then a five is a r power four plus seven. A three is a r cube equals to eight. The first term is two. By taking LCM here, it will be nine a r four plus seven a r cube. Sorry, not 7 AR cube. It is by taking LCM, it is 14 AR cube equals to 8 to the 60. And if the value of A is 2, so it will be 18 R power 4 plus 28 plus 28. Here it is. And one more thing, this will be AR squared, not AR cube because we are calculating third term and the third term is AR square minus 16 equals to zero. So it will be like a quadratic equation. Just by using your calculator, take out the two values of R. So the first value of R is four upon nine and the second value of R is negative. And this is not the value of R because because here we have r power 4 and r squared. So this is the value of smaller r, which is r squared. So therefore, the value of r is 2 over 3. Therefore, the value of r is 2 over 3. We have to eliminate, we have to reject the negative value of r because r is positive. So in this, we have to calculate the value of r, which is 2 over 3. Hopefully, it is clear. There is no confusion in this question. And after that, find the sum of the first 20 terms of the progression, geometric progression, give your answer correct to four significant figure. So now, the sum of the first 20 terms by using the sum formula, S20 equals to A. What is A? A is 2. R, what is R? 2 upon 3. R power N, N is 20 minus 1 upon R minus 1, 2 upon 3 minus 1. By using your calculator, find out the value, which is 5.998. This is the sum up to the first 20 terms. And after that, part C, find the sum up to infinity of the progression. A2, A5, A8. A2, A5, A8. So what is A2? A2 will be AR. What is A5? It will be AR power 4. What is A8? It will be AR power 7 and so on. So the first term is AR. And the common ratio is AR4 upon AR. A and A cancel out. R and R cancel. So it will be common ratio is R cube. Sum up to infinity. The formula is A over. 1 minus R. What is A? A is AR. And what is R? R is R cube. 
replace the values a is 2 r is 2 upon 3 over 1 minus 2 upon 3 whole cube so the final answer is 1.89 this is the final answer up to infinity of the given progression now the next question uh, this was question number 10 and now this is question number 11 what we have in this question number 11 question number 11 is about the functions the function is given by completing the square find the range of f okay completing the square means 10 plus 6x minus x squared compare it with a x minus h whole squared plus k a general formula for a sketching of any curve so it will be ax squared minus 2 axh plus ah squared plus k now by coefficient comparison the value of a is minus 1 minus 2 ah coefficient of x equals to 6 and the value of h is 6 over minus 2 a is minus 1 the answer is 3 and the constant ah square plus k equals to 10. So what is the value of k? The value of k is 10 minus a h square 3 square is 9. So the value of k is 10 plus 9 is 19. Therefore, the function is a x minus h whole square plus k if we sketch if we sketch the curve what is the value of h the value of h is 3 and the value of k is 19 y intercept is 10 because the constant of the general equation is y intercept so the curve is like this intersecting y-axis at 10. Therefore, the range of the curve is less than equals to 90. The range of the curve is less than equals to 90. Hopefully, this is clear, a simple question. And after that, the function g is defined by, the function g is defined by 4x plus k. And the condition is, in the B part, it is given that the graph of y equals to g inverse fx meets the graph of y equals to gx at a single point. Determine the coordinates of P. Okay. The two curves are meeting at the single point. It means we have to calculate. We, we have to use discriminant to calculate the uh, to, cal uh, to calculate the value of k. To calculate the value of k and also to determine the coordinates of p and also to determine the value, uh, coordinates of p now first we have to calculate g inverse for g inverse the function g is 4x plus k make x be the subject so x equals to y minus k upon 4 so g inverse will be x minus k upon 4 and we, we need to calculate g inverse fx. Replace x of g inverse by fx. And what is fx? It is 10 plus 6x minus x squared minus k divided by 4. And now, this is g inverse fx. And what is y equals to gx? The gx is... 4x plus k, we compared both of the graphs so that we can get a, an equation in terms of x only. So 10 plus 6x minus x squared minus k equals to 16x plus 4k. Now, it will be x squared plus 10x plus 5k minus 10 equals to 0. 
discriminant is also equal to zero because they are intersecting at a single point. Now B squared minus four AC equals to zero. What is B? B is 10. What is A? A is one. What is C? C is 5K minus 10 equals to zero. So 5K minus 10 equals to minus 100 upon minus four. And the value of K according to this is seven. This is the value of K. And if we need to calculate the coordinate from where they are intersecting, so just replace the value of k here in this equation, it will be x squared plus 10x, the k is 7, 35 minus 10 is 25 equals to 0. By using your calculator, find out the value of x, so according to this, x equals to minus 5 and if x equals to minus 5 then what is the value of y the value of y is 4x plus k so it will be minus 20 plus 7 is minus 13 so minus 5 comma minus 30 this is the coordinate of P. And this was the last question. Hopefully, the paper is not difficult. And after that, this is your May, June 2024 paper 1 3. And one more thing that uh, your uh, workshop of S1 is at 4th. May and P3 is at 5th May. If you want to register, then you may contact me uh, at the number two seven five four three two four. Plus, if you want to, if anyone wants the PDF of this paper, then you can message me, you can WhatsApp me at this number, plus uh, the recording of this complete paper will be uploaded on the channel name Mac Matics at YouTube, right? So now, good luck students for your P1 exam. See you soon, inshallah, with another paper of S1. Thank you very much.